Welcome to Kids Only. We're gonna do some great stuff here today. We're gonna cook some peanut butter spirals with Brandon and his mom. And we're gonna make homemade Play-Doh with Josh and his dad. We'll also talk to my friend, Emily Thomas, sing some songs and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Brandy, and this is my son Brandon. Hi. And today we're gonna help. We're gonna show you how to make a great tasting, healthy treat called banana peanut butter spiral. And remember, kids, when cooking in the kitchen, you should always get help from an adult. Okay. So here's what you'll need: one half cup of peanut butter, one third cup of vanilla yogurt one teaspoon of orange juice, two bananas, four tortilla shells, and two teaspoons of honey crunch wheat germ, and a quarter cup of ground cinnamon. The first step is to combine the peanut butter and yogurt till it's smooth. You wanna help me put this in there, Brandon? Yes. And then we're gonna take the bananas, and drizzle some orange juice over them. Let's just bring that whole tray over here, Brandon. And drizzle some orange juice over it. Mm. Okay, let's go get a tortilla shell. Now once this is all smooth, I'm gonna take the peanut butter and spread it over the tortilla. Just like so. And then, here Brandon, why don't you help me put the bananas on there? After that, we're gonna sprinkle on some wheat germ. And some cinnamon. Just like that. And we're gonna roll it up. You think you can roll it up, Brandon? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna cut it because kids aren't supposed to use knives. Right, Brandon? Right. And that's how you make a honey crunch peanut butter wheat spiral. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Aisha, Isaiah, thank you for having me on the show today. Thanks for coming, Jamie. Yeah, we're really glad you're here. Thank you. I'd like to perform one of my favorite old songs, the Alphabet Song. And then I'm going to play it again, a little more rock and roll. And I want you guys to join me for that one. Okay. Sounds oh. good. Okay. So it goes like this, and if you don't know it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now we know our ABCs, next time won't you sing with me? Now let's hit it! One, two, three, four! A, B, C, D, E, M, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, E, W, X, and Y, and Z. Fun, Jamie. Yes, you ought to Jamie. come back and do this all the time. I'd be happy to. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Till next time. Bye bye. This is my friend, Emily Thomas. 
She's a gymnast. A lot of practice to be a gymnast. Emily's hero is famous Olympic gymnast John Johnson. on the gymnastic team at Midwest Twisters. This is her coach, Liz. Hi, I'm Liz Bysell. I'm Emily Thomas's gymnastics coach. Um, I've been coaching with Emily for about three years. She started in the rec program and I brought her in onto my team. She did two years of level four and this last year level four she won state meet for the 11 year old division. So um, it was actually like the best thing ever. I even cried a little bit because I was so proud of her. So um, she works really hard. She's very dedicated to the sport, and um, she did her first level five meet in February, and she did absolutely awesome. Um, I don't know. If she this, she loves the sport. It's her passion. It's her life, and it takes a lot of dedication to keep it going. And that's what she loves to do. So I'm proud to be her coach, and everybody here is proud to have her part of our gym. If you would like to be a gymnast like Emily and Sean, contact Midwest Twisters or a local gym near you. Hey, are you guys ready to make fun and easy craft at home? Well, me and my dad are going to show you how. I'm Joshua and this is my dad, Eli. Hey, kids. We're making homemade Play-Doh. Most of the ingredients can be found in your kitchen. You need one cup of flour, half a cup of salt, two tablespoons of cream tartare, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and a cup of water with food coloring in it. And then you put all the ingredients in there and you're gonna get them in there right, make sure they're proper measurements, and... First, have an adult turn on, turn the stove to medium. Okay. Then, put all the ingredients in a sauce. Okay, here's one we finished earlier. And once it cools, you can roll it till it's nice and smooth. Here, let me help you. Let me put a little power into that. Dude, you're breaking it. And this is the way it will look when it's stuck. Good job, son. Thank you, Dad. I'm just a little tadpole swimming.
a frog And do the tadpole wiggle And the froggy hop Do the tadpole wiggle You won't ever want to stop Do the tadpole wiggle And the froggy hop Do the tadpole wiggle, wiggle, wiggle We're never gonna stop Do the tadpole wiggle Most students consider spring break a period of time to relax. A very special combination of students likes to think differently. Today we've brought in puppets from a puppeteering class at UWM. Really, it's uh, my students in the UWM puppet class will take the puppet class, they'll design puppets with an end result in mind. Those end results can range from an owl to a polka princess and even a troll. This is my puppet, Bucky. This is my hand and rod puppet, so this is the more advanced puppet that I had to build. I know you have a creeper stash, but... Using the facilities at Milwaukee Public Television, both MATC and UWM students take on the opportunity to be creative. Our class, uh, our student operations group, is using the puppets for interstitials, for promotions, and also filming a class project. Tim Decker holds hope for the future that this will be a long-term collaboration. The thing is, we're making quality educational programming. This puppet polka may seem like a lot of fun, and it is, but my students have learned how to manufacture puppets, how to make them, how to bring personality, and how to get into character. When it's all said and done, the collaboration between the schools could meet unlimited potential for educational opportunities. There it is, there it is. Yep, he's playing, he's playing. Ever wanted to make your own cartoon? These guys are going to show you how it's done. When you're animating, you want to break it down into simple steps, because cartoons are a hard thing to make. So first, you must have an idea. You start with that idea, and you come up with characters. So then you create the characters, and you do that by drawing them. When you're developing characters, you, um, you have to get an essence for that character, you know, through your drawings and your art, you have to uh, capture its character, you know, capture its energy, you know, people have to be able to read your character instantly by its body language, by the way it acts, you know, its facial expressions, everything. So, you know, if a character is doofy or goofy, you should know that the second you look at him, yeah, you know? If a character is like hardcore and he's supposed to be a leader, you should see that the second you look at that character, you know it. Um, there's no question, you know, our brain works symbolically and, you know, through symbols. Depending on the size of the team, if we were doing it here, it would probably take up to a year uh, to do a half hour show. We've done uh, three minute music videos that have taken um, anywhere between four to six months. So I don't know, maybe it might even take more than a year to do 30 minutes. Wasn't really happy just doing still frames, uh, illustrations, and um, I took a few summer classes at the University of Green Bay that taught me how to do some flash animation. And that was much more appealing to me than uh, just, you know, fine art or illustration or graphic design. Um, actually making something come to life was uh, a lot more entertaining. The next step is recording the audio, what the characters are going to say. We got the idea from uh, a little idea that Rob had. I think it stemmed from an illustration he had. 
and um, we kind of started adding to it um, until it it could work as an entire series. Um, uh, it's a show for kids that's part adventure, part um, educational. Um, uh, and so we wanted it to appeal to a wide range of uh, audience members. Like the adventure would be for the whole family. The education would be for the kids and the parents would like that their kids are learning while watching this show. Then, after that, you animate the show. You draw the characters over and over to make them come to life as if it looks like fluid motion. I think it just takes a lot of um, inspiration of watching different animated uh, shows and feature films, not only 3D but 2D and old stuff. Um, so you start learning what's good and what's bad. Um, and if you if you're interested it, in it enough, then you'll be willing to draw, I don't know, 24 frames a second. Um, spend weeks on less than a second of animation. Once you have the idea created, and you have an entire animation, and it's ready to go, and you've put it all together, <laughs> then you have to get someone to buy your idea. You hope someone like Cartoon Network picks it up, or, I mean, MPTV. So, <laughs> you can have a job. My name is Carol Seaman. I'm the Director of Child Care Services for MATC. I oversee the operation of the four child care centers, one at each campus, and I do the day-to-day -day supervision of the Oak Creek Campus Center. We provide child care services to students taking daytime classes at each of our campuses. We serve children ages six weeks on up to 13 years. We also serve the students um, in the practicum program and the early childhood education program who do their student teaching in our sites. We have children who are the children of staff and faculty of the college and on a space available basis we provide child care to community families. The child care centers provide high quality child care for the children. The MATC centers are accredited through the National Association for the Education of Young Children, the highest accrediting body in the United States. All of the centers maintain that accreditation which is re-accredited every five years. The staff who are teachers of the children provide developmentally appropriate curriculum and activities for children in each of the classrooms. Children have a variety of indoor and outdoor, small group and large group, child initiated and teacher planned activities. The centers are fully equipped with a wide range of appropriate equipment and materials that allow the children to self-explore and use their creativity. 
Some of the special services that MATC provides to child care parents is that we do flexibly schedule child care so each student can tailor their child care enrollment to their class schedule. We also do what's called occasional use child care. We enroll children for occasional child care need based on the parents' needs. Many of our occasional use children are children who are in public and parochial schools. Their school calendars do not always coincide with MATC schedule, so students, staff, and faculty can enroll their children for the school off days so their children are cared for and they can go on attending classes and working. Uh, the teaching staff work in low ratios with children, which allows and provides children with very low child teacher ratios, so they get a lot of individual attention. Child care is important at MATC because it allows students to recognize their educational and life goals. It is critical for many of our parents to have flexibly scheduled child care that becomes affordable for them and can support them in their lifelong endeavors. The child care services staff, the entire staff, appreciate the ongoing collaboration and support of the rest of the college community. This has allowed us to be in existence for 23 plus years. Well kids, thanks for joining us. Hope to see you soon. And next time, remember, keep it a secret. It's for kids only.